What is going on guys? Thank you for joining me. Welcome to this season 10 review episode. So we are going to have a look through at my squad from the season. Have a look, see who's impressed, who's let me down, what positions I need to improve, etc. Now, as always, I've actually learned from doing these the last few episodes, few seasons, as, um, as we look at the players and look at the tackling, look at the, the um, passing, look at the shooting percentages etc and going through all of that I've kind of realised hence for example the left back if you remember we noticed the right back and the two centre backs were doing really well and the left back was letting us down and then we improved with Sheaving who's been a really solid player so it shows that doing all of that can be a massive help so we're going to start at the top so we have Alberto Risi who he ended up playing 42 games, conceding 74, which was an insane amount. And when we go on to just his competitive games, as we see here, he had a 69% save accuracy. Um, now, that's, that went up a bit, if you remember. It was actually down to 65%, which was disappointing. And then we ended up looking to bring another keeper. 79% um, pass completion. And if you're lucky in the league, just as the main... Well, we'll go for it all. Um, shots, which one's that? That saves tipped. Um, saved parried, 42. Saves health, 60. So he's, he does hold a lot, which is nice. Um, he made four mistakes all season. The next one is Andrew Robertson, someone who we will just skip straight over. The next one is Anthony Saunders. So if you remember, guys, this is guys on loan from Swansea. So he ended up playing 25 games in total. Now, I want to say, is he worth looking to bring him back in? I think that's going to be the main thing. How well did he actually do? So shot percentage was 47%. Then if you go close, you've got his pass completion 77%. Tackling 61%. He made 37 mistakes all season. Only completed 10 of 88 crosses. That is disappointing. Um, so there's a possibility that we do actually just need to look at he just didn't do enough. Um, only complete 10 of 88. Um, crosses complete, obviously, 10 tackles. Mistakes, 25 in the league, for example. Um, I don't think he was good enough, to be honest. I think we'll probably move on from him. So we'll go on to the next guy here, which is our left-back, who we brought in after some experience... In previous seasons, so let's um, let's dive into him, shall we? So he just shot a three thousand passes throughout season, two thousand one hundred and fifty completed, which is decent. That is decent. Um, one hundred and eighty-one tackles, one hundred and fifty-six, one eighty-six percent tackle completion. You do not get past this man often. Um, one hundred and one mistakes. It's a lot of mistakes, guys. Um, two of them led to goals. That's not too bad, but. It's a lot of mistakes, so hopefully he can slowly get them out of his game. 11 out of 81 crosses completed, actually better cross percentage than our the young right winger who's on loan. So, Sheaving has been solid and he will be staying in the squad. The next one is Sibson, one of our long-serving players. So, he's pass completion at 79%, tackle completion at 61%. That's actually improved. That's improved. 7 out of 34 crosses completed. Um, and 37 mistakes, none led to goals. So he didn't do too bad there. His stats are still decent. I genuinely think he's a, a great player to have around the squad. 260 appearances for the club now. The next person is Kevin Smith. He played 15 games for this season, so he probably is worth looking into. See if he's worth moving on, possibly. See if he's worth keeping. So in just competitive, you've got 77% tackle completion, 73% pass completion. Um, 35 mistakes, none leading the goals. Headers won 62%. Now, he just played defence midfield a bit for this season, so the headers won ratio is a bit low. And you'll see why when we get to James Reid, for example. So I think he's worth hanging on to, but he is on quite a high wage, so there's a possibility I might move him on as well. Bit up in the air. The next one is Arnie. Now Arnie obviously came in in January. Came in as a hot prospect on £700 a week. Hot prospect, couple of year contract. And once he got in the first team, he didn't get out of it. Um, we'll go on to his Sky Bay League 1 stats. 77% pass completion. 53% tack completion. That's not the best. 
Fifty-seven percent shot completion is decent for the for a midfielder. Now we only complete ten out of ninety-four crosses, and um, twenty mistakes, non-leading goals. But he was all around solid. Five goals, three assists. I think we need to look at the tactic in terms of crosses because we're not completing enough. Um, the next guy is Billy Waiters. He's now thirty. He's played one hundred and sixty-one times. He's been with us for five years. Um, he got 10 goals, 8 assists throughout the season. So that definitely shows he, he did quite well. Competitively, 77% pass completion, 61% tackle completion, only 45% shot completion, so worse than Arnie, for example. He made more mistakes, one of them leading to a goal, 46 in total. Now he tried 396 crosses, only 32 were completed. So definitely the main thing that's coming out of this episode is that we need to look at our in terms of how we get the ball into the box. So the next player is somebody who I feel like we should have used more of, but he just couldn't get past um, Pedifer in our team. So if we go into how we actually did in terms of stats throughout the season, he had an eight, a 76% pass completion, a 76% tackle completion as well. That's superb. Um, two out of 32 crosses complete, but that's not really what you want from a central midfielder, so we'll ignore that. He got two goals, two assists, 27 mistakes, non-leading goals, so I'm hopefully going to get him back on loan. Really do actually hope I can get him back on loan. The next one is Samuel, Samuel our right back. Um, he dropped down the pecking order, but we're going to see, obviously, wrong screen, we're going to see, because there's possibility he might end up being back in the first team next season. So you had 80% tackle completion, which is nice. 71% pass completion. One mistake led to a goal. 11 crosses out of 73. So he has a better cross completion in percentage-wise than anybody else. He only got one assist, though, all season. So you got to look at all aspects. He's crossing better than others, but he's only got one assist. So the next one. He's 26 years old now. He's 181 caps for us. Pepe Castano. Now, he's been linked away to £80,000 moves. There's no way I'm letting him go for £80,000. Um, no way. I'm thinking half a million at the least. And this is why. 96 tackles, 86% won. Only 67 mistakes all season, two leading the goals. But at centre-back, you're going to make mistakes at times. He got two goals for start season. Now, his head and percentage was only was at 75%, sorry, which is his best ever I think best ever throughout the season so he's definitely a player we need to hold on to guys definitely first choice centre back next one is Mark Collins he only played the six games for us and he will be moving on he's just not good enough guys and um, not good enough we signed him after a decent loan spell and he's just let us down in fact let's just um offer him out to clubs again and just see if we can see if we can cash in on him at about 80k I think it's an acceptable amount for someone who's not that good. The next man, the the legend, the captain, the man. One of the big big things to mention about him is the fact he's just signed a new deal, three years with the potential of another three. He's the highest earner at the club now, but I think he deserves it. Um, in terms of being in the squad, he's just unbelievable. Especially when you look at the fact his teamwork and work is so low, yet he does so much. Um. He's a man who defies the stats. And if we go into the League One, for example, he started 43 for 46 games. He has an 81% pass completion, 3,384 passes, 64% um, tack completion, 91 mistakes, um, which is a bit, uh, it's quite a lot. Maybe something that needs to be looked into, why he's doing so many. But seven goals, four assists. Four Man of the Match awards. Bram Ellison is just amazing. Why is he not capped for England? Who knows? Um, the next one is Jokai. 194 caps for the club. Um, is his time up? His contract's run out. He's on 3.6k a week. Um, if he's willing to come for a lot less. Let's see if I can get him for one. Um, and then we're offering 500 appearance fee. But it's only going to be a first team. It's not going to be anything more. Will he take that? No. So he is going to be leaving because I'm not forking out stupid money for him. 
with one of the stats for 89% tackle completion, which is unbelievable. But then when you go, he's got 73% heading completion. Pass completion of only 61%. That's the issue. Four, four goals because of mistakes he's made. He wins a lot of tackles, granted. He scores some goals, two goals, two assists. But he's 31 and he wants a wage which we just can't sustain. So unfortunately we will be going. It's sad, very sad. And I mean, when you look at the, the report and the stats, it shows he's a decent player still. Um, better than his average rating shows. But, yeah, unfortunately his time at the club's up. So the next one is um, Brian Christensen, someone who we brought in during the season as um, a potential first-team goalkeeper. And um, when we look at this, his shot saved is 69% the exact same as Reese. Pass completion is a little bit worse. Um, so, and he's holding as many shots tip 5, parried 16, held 24. So, it's so tough for them to decide out of him and Reese who is first choice goalkeeper. But, that's a good thing that we've got two goalkeepers who are battling it out. So, we'll give them another season and just see how they can do. The next guy we're going to gloss over because he only played the one game for us is someone who I brought in as a youngster on £500 a week. Um, if anything, he's just going to add up numbers as the fact that he can play in a few positions for next season. He might get a few games, but not that many. Next one is Stephen McParland. He was here on loan. He played 38 games, 14 goals. He's not going to be coming back. Uh, um, his contract is up, but he just didn't do enough to justify me forking out the the money to actually sign him. So we're not going to go into detail on him. The next one, guys, we brought him in. If you remember, I signed um, him as a youngster, hot prospect, and yet he played 26 times for seven as subs as well. Um, so let's just see a little bit more deep. How did Andrew Munro do? He had an 88% tackle completion, so this is probably going to be the guy who's going to take over Joe Kai. 61% pass completion, 75% tackle completion, 40 mistakes, 1 lead and a goal, 238 interceptions. Heading ratio was um, 53%, so that is something he needs to work on, his heading and maybe his positioning, etc. So look, 11, jump reach is 8. So... He has got a few issues in terms of making himself a really good defender, but I'm fairly happy with him. He, he stepped up from Darford at the end of the day and stepped into League One to play at centre back, which isn't even his natural position, and yet he did such a really good job, guys. So fair play to him. The next one was Arna Ma Olufsen. He only ended up playing a couple of games. Didn't get a goal. Not really worth checking out at the minute, guys. He's again another one for next season. Came in as a hot prospect. And hopefully he's going to develop decently. Next one's Andre Palmerson. Now, I signed him. He was one who we actually spent big money on in terms of wages. £950 a week rotation contract. So, let's just see. Has he justified coming in as a right back? And has he done well? So, 16 appearances. 87% tackle completion, 151 inceptions, two mistakes leading the goals, 69% pass completion. I think he's justified it, guys. 82% heading percentage as well. He has been solid, absolutely solid as a rock. And to come in, I think, was he free or did we pay for him? He was free. So he's came in, cost us nothing, valued at 53k now and just done really, really well for his first season at the age of 19 in the club. The next man. The man who came in, he came in, guys, as a potential backup fullback. If you remember when I signed him, I said his stats to me showed that he could play as a wing back and he wasn't going to get in our team in this position. Well, this is a situation where you put your hands up and admit that you were wrong. So he ended up playing 33 games starting, 80% pass completion, 3,208 passes. Now, we also had a 75% tackle completion. He made 53 mistakes. Um, and as you see, he got 11 assists, 5 goals. Um, not a good header of the ball, but he doesn't have to do it. He just played unbelievable. This guy just stepped up. One thing I would say, I've said it before, he wants stupid money. I mean, how much is the extension? Actually, do you know what? If I put him on a 2-year contract extension now... 
if I put him on this, right, I've just activated two year contract, so he's got three years left on his contract. I think we can keep or move him on for big, big money. So that's a great move to extend the contract. It means we don't risk losing him for nothing. Because he's just finished top of the stats, which you'll see soon. Next guy didn't play many games, who so will gloss past. So here we are, James Reed Again, someone who my, my team do not rate. Someone who they say is just not good enough for this level, guys. He's reached 250 appearances for the club now, so congratulations to him for that. But let's go on the report, as you can see. So here we are. 79% tackle completion, two mistakes leading to goals, 598 mist, um, interceptions, 77% pass completion, um, headers one ratio, 87%. So in that defensive midfield, he drops in the form of three man back line and he's doing a superb job. So really, really impressed by him there. So I think Reed is just a player who. I'll go back up to him. I think Reed is just a player who my scouts and my assistant just are clearly clueless about because I really do think he's worth it. Um, in terms of the mistakes, 93 mistakes is a lot, but I think in the position he plays in, he's going to be susceptible um, to mistakes, so I'm just kind of gloss over them. Rory Ring, he didn't play enough games to kind of review too much. But a 77 pass completion in the league isn't bad. And again, he's still just a really, really nice, solid player to have as a backup in the club. Then we're back to Alberto Risi. So we've been through the whole squad, guys. Um, so I think what we've learned from that is we need to look at the wingers and see why we fail in crosses so many. Is it because we only have the one striker? Do we need to prevent the crosses? Do we need to make sure they're not crossing the ball? I think that's maybe something we can look at, guys. Maybe make sure they're crossing the ball later. Maybe tell them to get to the byline to cross. Um, some things to look into, definitely. And then obviously we need to look at strengthening in defence because Jokai is leaving. And definitely a striker because Collins is going, McParlin's going. And Arnhemar Olofsson is just not ready to be starting in the squad. So we're going to go on to League One. And let's see how we did compared to other teams in the division. So we finished ninth in average possession, which is nice. Penalties wise, we got fourth highest. Yellow cards, how were we? Wow. 13 yellow cards. We were by far the best team for... Wow. Wow, we were disciplined. Red cards, did we even get one? No, we didn't get a single red card and only 13 yellow cards all season. That is superb. Like, goals-wise, this this is where we get bad. Okay, so we only got 63, we were 20th. That's just terrible. Cross-completion, I mean, we're going to be down there last. 10% cross-completion, wow. Goals from corners, is this something we need to improve? So, 7, 5th best, joint 5th, that's not too bad. Goals from direct free kicks, we were bottom, we didn't get a single one. Goals from indirect free kicks... Joined second with seven, so set-piece wise we're doing fairly well. Past completion we were topping it, 74%. 18,327 passes completed, which puts us second behind Huddersfield. So we are starting to play some beautiful football and it's becoming apparent in the division. In terms of defensive record, we were shocking. Joined 12th and that is something I'm going to work on. As you know guys, I pride myself on my defence, so that's actually quite bad. Um, in terms of conceded from corners, we didn't concede... Oh, no, we actually conceded... We were 19th, we conceded 7. Right, we're going to look into that. Direct free kicks, we can't really do anything with. We conceded 1. Indirect, we only conceded 1. Joined best in the league. Clean sheet, we got 10. We were joined 13th. Um, average attendance, we're probably right down there. 19th of 5,000. Stadium sellouts, 23. We sold out every single game. Max now, 5,000. So, obviously, we topped that off. Lowest attendance. I mean, we're going to be at the 5,000 mark. So, net transfer spend, I think we made money. Yeah, 1,005. Oh, sorry, it's just down to zero. Ah, it's because we didn't spend anything. Oh, okay. So, set in secure. That's always nice. Salary per annum, 10 million a season and we had wow wow we were like last and 
that's just mental. That's mental thing. We had the lowest salary in the whole division, guys. But that's the end of the review. We've kind of had a look. We've seen what we need to do for next season. So I'm now going to hit pre-season hard and see what we can get sorted. See how I can improve this squad and join me tomorrow where we look at what I've done during pre-season. So thanks for watching, guys. Really do appreciate it. And I will see you next time.